Good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. The winter forecast update will be coming out in the next couple of days here and these are some of the things that we're going to be looking at. Solar maximum, we've got a negative PDO, we've got a positive AMO, we've got a positive Siberian snow cover at the moment, neutral Indian Ocean dipole, the MJO. We're going to be talking a lot about the MGO and we obviously in many videos, including today's video, we're going to be looking at uh, some aspects with regards to the MGO. Looks as if we've got a developing central, weak central La Nina, um, which is going to be quite interesting. And then we've obviously got the Westerly QBO. So these are a few of the teleconnections that we look at with regards to the winter ideas. And as we progress through the month of October, some of these teleconnections become more important and things get more interesting going forward as well here. So over the next few days, the uh, October update for the winter 2024-25 forecast will be released and discussed here on the channel. So if you're a lover of all things weather, all things winter, uh, now is the time to hit that subscribe button. It would be greatly appreciated. But the, the MJO is now moving into the mile phases of four and five. That is... Um, there's no coincidence that the pattern is therefore seeing that response taking place. So you can see here the green line represents where the MJ was projected to go by the GFS ensemble here. So it's becoming a little bit more amplified into phases four and five. And that response suggests this look. So you've got the strong positive Arctic oscillation developing here. We've also got the... the positive NAO developing also. So we're coming off the back of a very deep negative, now going towards positive. And this is how that looks on the ECM weekly model here. So this is the upcoming seven days. This is the mean sea level pressure. A little bit hard to see, I do appreciate that. But you can see here the deep negative just to the west of the British Isles and Ireland, up towards Greenland as well, and the consequential ridge over Eastern North America and Western areas of Europe here. So that's a textbook phase four or five of the MJO, looking at the upper heights for the upcoming seven day period as well. And you can see here the warm look to the pattern region over both the North America and over Europe here, negative replaces what has been quite a strong positive in the last two to three weeks. But I'm optimistic folks, that this pattern is gonna repeat itself. What has just gone over the last two to three weeks will repeat some point into the month of November. And speaking of the month of November, this is what the ECM seasonal looks like for November. If we look at the mean sea level pressure anomaly here for the monthly, you can see that we've got positive heights to the north up into Greenland here. That MJO looks as if it's going to move back into the West Pacific once again, and then we'll see the consequential result in the in the upper air pattern. But this is all the ideas that I'm generating at the moment. There's no hard fast certainty with regards to the outlook we know that beyond a week or so the uh, the reliability in terms of forecasting becomes a lot less but uh, we've seen this repeating pattern already through the last two, two months really and uh, i think what we're seeing now has been expected we knew that the pattern was going to flip we know also that the stratospheric polar vortex is going to strengthen as well now we've had up until now, record weak mean zonal wind speeds um, at 10 millibars, so way up within the, the upper levels of the stratosphere. And what that is doing is it's probably due to the strong blocking within the troposphere that has been propagating up into the stratosphere, creating a frictional drag on those developing winds circulating around the polar vortex. And when you've got that slower mean zone of wind you've got a, a less tight circulation and therefore that is able to release cold into the middle attitude pat pattern a lot more uh, effectively once you've got that band of strong wind surrounding the polar vortex becoming stronger it tends to lock in that cold air mass and therefore you've got stronger zonal winds within the uh, within the middle attitudes that tends to flood both north america and europe with mild oceanic air, whether it be Pacific or Atlantic air. Um, and what we're seeing at the moment is the likely strengthening of the mean zonal winds here. If we look at the, the 
projection of the the ECMWF. If I can get to the right chart, um, it might might be helpful. But um, let me see here, just for a second here, um, and see what it is uh, showing because it is expected, and there is no coincidence, by the way, that we are seeing this. MJO interfaces three, four, and five. The lack a reduction of heights over the Arctic region. So once you start to see heights lowering within the troposphere over the high latitudes, that would suggest that those mountains of pressure extending from troposphere into the stratosphere then drop back below, and therefore we start to see a, an acceleration of winds within. The, within the polar stratosphere here. And that is exactly what the modeling is now suggesting. We're starting to go above that record week level here. And notice here, as we move towards week three and four of October, the ECM model is projecting the winds within the 10 millibar level to become stronger than normal. And I think this is very, very indicative of the change going on within the, within the tropics. That's translating towards the high latitudes, and therefore we're starting to see the effects taking place within the upper levels of the troposphere into the stratosphere here. So you're starting to see those mountains within the troposphere reduce. Therefore, you're, la you're losing that drag within the stratosphere, and therefore that polar vortex should strengthen, but the mean zone of winds surrounding that vortex should also strengthen in response to the changes that are taking place. So it's all interconnected, the tropics and the pole, very much in harmony with one another quite often. And it'll be interesting to see as we move towards the month of November, with the MGO expected to rotate back into the West Pacific, that changes the strength and the shape of the jet stream, the, the um, atmospheric wavelengths, uh, ridges and troughs start to change once again. And it'll be interesting to see whether we can go back to what we've seen already. Now, obviously, during the month of September and October, you tend to find that, you know, the cold that comes south is nowhere near on par with what you would want to see during the middle of the winter, for example. But it's what the pattern is actually telling us that's more important than what it's actually doing. It's what it's telling us that I think it could have significant influence uh, further down the road. So these mean zonal winds at 10 millibars within the upper levels of the stratosphere go from record week to above average. And I think this is very much indicative of that MJO. Now, also, we have a, a, a building of the Siberian snowpack. We're going to be talking about this more in the winter uh, update coming up in the next few days. So stay tuned. But uh, this is the projected snow cover seen by the GFS between now and the 31st of October. So we're going to see, if the GFS is correct, we're going to see this level of snow cover extent over the Northern Hemisphere. Now, there's been a lack of snow cover across Northern North America, but we've got actually above average Siberian snow cover here, and there is a relationship between this and the stratosphere. There's a couple of different theories out there with regards to the a sh uh, an increase in Siberian snow cover during the month of October strengthens the Siberian high. That, in turn, has influence on the polar stratosphere as well. And there's been there's a lot of good reason to believe. I've struggled with this theory slightly because sometimes I think it, do it doesn't seem to always work. But we've actually essentially got the third greatest Siberian snow cover extent for the time of the year for mid-October in the last 20 years. Now, there is um, a lot of uh, a lot of research being done on this that suggests that a, 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 a increased Siberian snow cover during the month of October leads to a stronger Siberian high, and then that has an effect, a warming effect on the polar stratosphere, and sometimes that can lead to a sudden stratospheric warming later down the road. Not initially, not in the next few weeks, but later on uh, into the winter season, there is, uh, th there's, there's been research done that suggests that the, a major sudden stratospheric warming is much more likely when you've got a broader extent of, of Siberian snow cover over, over Siberia in particular. 
as well as North America. Um, so this is going to be an interesting situation developing. Like I say, this is a, the projection of the GFS for Thursday, the 31st of October. So Halloween, the very final day of, uh, of October. This is the current snow cover extent across North America. And you notice the lack of snow cover over northern North America. But look at over Siberia. Uh, it's grown pretty fast. And if we look at this uh, image here of uh, severe weather Europe, you can see here that it is above normal over parts of Siberia, but it is below normal across the north of North America here. But by the time we reach the end of the month, it looks as if that snow cover is much more extensive um, across uh, even North America. So we'll watch this uh, as we go forward here. But the... Uh, so that's a little taster in terms of the 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 some winter ideas anyway, some some of the tail connections that we're going to be looking at. Let's have a, a quick look at the here and now then and see what uh, the pattern is is showing. So we've got um, high pressure, quite a strong area of high pressure to the east, uh, low pressure to the west. That low pressure to the west will eventually win the battle. We've got slowly flow, we've got mild temperatures. So at the moment, here are the current temperatures. So we've got 12s, 13s, and 14s across the north. We've got 15 to uh, 17, even 18 Celsius across the south due to that southerly flow here. And uh, those temperatures are going to rise further. It looks as if, you know, this, this warmer, more humid southerly flow that we're seeing in Gulf, the UK, and Ireland, wouldn't be surprised if we see temperatures really struggling to drop uh, during the overnight tonight as cloud increases. We've got a lot of cloud cover at the moment, but they... With cloud and southerly wind, we're going to see the temperatures hold up, I think, throughout the overnight. And then tomorrow we could even see slightly warmer temperatures, despite the fact that we're going to see a lot of rain moving in uh, off the Atlantic uh, also here. So this is off the GFS model that we're looking at today. And you can see that rain moving across Ireland and Northern Ireland as we speak, moving now into Wales, the southwest. And then that band then really starts to pep up and then drift northwards here and it looks as if it could be quite a soggy looking day during Wednesday. Then as we move towards the uh, second half of the week we get a little bit of a lull in the unsettled conditions and then when it's all eyes on this feature here it looks as if that area of low pressure is staying well to the west of the UK and Ireland. Remember yesterday it was just off the northwest of Scotland. This run of the model shows a, a 966 millibar low but it stays, even drops to 960, 959 uh, perhaps. So that's a deep area of low pressure, but it's getting deflected away due to that, the presence of this strong high that's now been shifted all the way out to uh, Western Russia. And then we'll see more systems uh, moving in. Uh, strong winds, you can see the squeeze in the isobars, quite a tight gradient here between 970 millibars and uh, a 1024 high to the southeast. Uh, we're going to see that squeeze in the pressure field, meaning we're going to see stronger winds uh, out of the west, southwest, and then more unsettled conditions moving in off the Atlantic. And then we've got more weather systems moving in, but it looks as if we've got a series of fairly deep areas of low pressure that is going to um, at least threaten the UK and Ireland as we progress late this week, through the weekend, and possibly into next week as well. What wouldn't surprise me is if we start to see higher pressure building over the UK, over Europe, as we go into the final week of uh, October. And that would be a phase 6 MJO uh, written all over, I would say. You can see here, by the time we reach Saturday, the 26th of October, got a 10.30 millibar high sitting over the UK and Ireland. If you look at the, the, the GFS ensemble, so just bear with me a little second here, and you can see that uh, it's suggesting a, a pressure building over uh, more western areas of uh, of Europe as we progress into week three and in the four of October. So this is the GFS ensemble. Let's look at uh, the upcoming five day period. So you can see here that we've got uh, a pretty strong Scandinavian type high. Uh, extending really from Central Europe all the way up into the north, low pressure to the west, low pressure to the southeast. As we move into the 6 to 10 day, you can see here very much a, a textbook positive NAO signal here, low to the northwest, high to the south and southeast. And then as we progress into the 11 to 15 day, heights are starting to build 
over more of the UK and Ireland here as that MJO likely moves into phases six. Then it's all eyes on where it goes after that. Do we see it rotating into phases seven, eight, and one? If it does, I would expect to see the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation going back negative once again. So certainly it's going to be an interesting watch going forward. If we look at the temperature anomalies here, you can see that uh, we go from firmly warmer than average upcoming five days to 6 to 10, warmer than average, and then the 11 to 15. As that high perhaps slides slightly to the west, we see drier conditions, but we also start to see a reduction in that temperature anomaly as well. Now, this is uh, how the past 45 days has looked. So below average across pretty much the majority of the UK and Ireland. Uh, so it has been a trend of cooler, really extending from the summer and through autumn so far. And the question mark will be, does this trend continue into November, December and beyond? That is going to be the question here. But it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting time. Uh, and I, I would encourage you to stick around here in the channel. We're going to be looking at all these different teleconnections over the next few days and what they may mean going forward. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Like and subscribe. See you next time with more. Bye for now.